Today I'm going to show you how to create this interior from scratch to finish. We'll go through everything, finding inspiration, setting up the lighting and even sourcing 3D models using a cool new AI tool. First up, you need to figure out your style. I'm using Leonardo AI to help with that. All I need to do is upload an image that has the look I'm going for, then type in a prompt describing what I want to see. For this project, I'm going for a boho style interior. In just a few minutes, I've got a bunch of new images that I can use as inspiration. Now let's dive in and start modeling the room. I'm using the image we picked out as a guide. Normally, if you have a real photo, you could match everything perfectly, like getting the room dimensions just right. But since we are working with an AI-generated image, it can be a bit off, you know, with all those weird errors and inconsistencies. So what I'll do is just eyeball the height and width of the room. It's more about getting the feel right than being pixel perfect. The first thing I do is lay down a simple plane, giving the walls a nice thickness of about 40 centimeters. Next, I extrude the walls up to 80 cm and then add another 100 cm section for where the window will be. We go up another 7 cm and just like that we've got our room framed out. Now I'll just select these polygons and use the bridge function to create a cool cutout for the window. Now just add one box for the ceiling and another for the floor with at least 50 cm thickness, so you don't have any light leaks on your model. Next, I'll drop in a window from my library and we are ready to roll. The next step is composition and for this we'll switch to D5 render. First, import the 3D model. Then, let's position the camera using the keyboard keys. I'm aiming for a different aspect ratio, so I'll start by clicking the Add Scene button. Then click the camera icon. A window pops up on the bottom right, but I want to see everything better, so I'll click this icon here to switch to full screen. Now on the right, we've got some extra options. First, I'll go to the aspect ratio and select 4x3, a standard for real world cameras. Using the keyboard and mouse, I'll position my camera to match my reference. But before that, let's adjust the camera focal length to something higher. I think 30mm should work perfectly here. I've centered the camera in the room and lowered it a bit to show more of the floor than the ceiling. Now I'll click this icon to update the scene and save all the new settings. Next, let's disable the auto exposure in the camera settings. We don't want it to adjust automatically every time we add new elements to the scene. It's better to manage this manually. At this point, the room looks pretty dark. But that's fine, because the next step is lighting. Click on Environment, then under HDR, click on the arrow for more options, and select Custom. Next, click on the folder icon to add a new HDR file. I've got mine from hdrhaven.com. The link for it will be in the description below. Next to the light option, there's an icon for more settings. Click on it and then adjust the skylight, which controls how much light from the HDR enters the room. Set this to the middle. For the background brightness, adjust it to 0.4. Now rotate the HDR until you find a position where no direct sunlight enters the room. There's nothing wrong with sunlight, but for this scene we are aiming for a neutral white look, so it's best to avoid direct sunlight. Around 230 degrees looks great for this HDR, but the scene is still too dark. So there are two things we need to do to fix this. First, let's add a rectangle light by the window to bring in more light. Adjust the size to fit the window and set the intensity to 15. Change the attenuation radius to 15,000, so the light reaches all the way to the other end of the room. Here's the difference with the 5,000 value compared to 15,000 value. The room looks much better now, but there's still one more adjustment we need to make. Click on the camera icon to open its settings and set the exposure to 0.3 and let there be light. With the lighting done, there's one last thing I like to do. Set some basic colors similar to the ones I'll be using later for the materials as this will influence the room's mood. So set this to a white tone and the wall to a darker white tone. For the floor, I'll go with a light brown since I'll be using an oak floor later. And here's how it looks so far. Now that we have finished with the camera and lighting, it's time to add 3D models to populate our scene. And if you are like me, 
Oftentimes, you start searching the hundreds of reference images to find the perfect piece of furniture. And when you do find the one you like, you start the infinite search through 3D model online libraries to get something that looks like the one you liked, right? This is where Scout by Assetor AI comes in. Scout is today's sponsor and it's an AI tool that finds assets by pictures across multiple 3D marketplaces. Let me show you how it works. You can drag and drop any image you want on this box and on the right side, there are some options. The first one is to select assets that are similar to the picture you provide. But as you can see by the results, it gives some variations on the form and materials while keeping the general original shape. As with Picture Assembler, it will try to detect individual objects, textures and materials on the image and search for assets this image could be assembled from. There are some filters on the right side, for example, you can search for free assets only, or if you click this drop down, you can select to display only the 3D marketplace of your choice. And if you want to be specific, you can also filter by furniture. On the subcategory, filter by sofa. I will click on this sofa and you see it takes me to the 3D Sky website, ready to get this 3D model. You can try Scout for free, I'll leave a link below for you to check it out. Now, I've already downloaded all the assets for this scene, and I'm going to skip the part about importing them because, let's be honest, that will be pretty boring. Instead, I'm going to show you the objects that have some special materials, so you can pick up a few neat tricks. Starting with the rug, you'll notice some wrinkles on it. This effect is achieved by using a normal map. In D5 Render, you can set individual UV mapping for each texture. Just click the icon next to each texture map slot. Then activate individual UV. This allows you to control the map scale and rotation separately from the other textures. You can really see the difference it makes with and without a normal map. Next, let's take a look at this plant. You can see this beautiful effect on the leaves, which is achieved using a subsurface scattering material that allows light to pass through them. To add this material, simply select Foliage from the Material drop-down list, then add the Color Map and Subsurface Mask. Sites like Polygon, Evermotion or Max3, for example, they usually provide all these maps, so you can get the correct shading on your models. Lastly, let's check out the floor texture. In the Color tab, I've added a light brown color to give the floor a warmer tone, typical of an oak floor. If you remove this, you will notice the floor looks much grayer in comparison. The last step to make this scene pop is adding surface decals. In real life, there's always some dirt, smudges and scratches here and there. So adding these details can really bring the scene to life. To do this, go to Assets and with the Models tab active, click on Decals. There are plenty to choose from, but I'll be using mostly damaged walls, water stains and rust. I usually adjust the size, color and opacity to get the right look. I spent some time adding a few of these decals to my scene and here's the before and after comparison. And here's the final image, straight out of D5 render without any post-processing. And that's it, I hope these tips were helpful for you. If they were, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. And if you want to keep learning about interior rendering with D5 Render, you can follow the link up there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.